Hola a todos, buenos días. Gracias por acompañarnos a la segunda sesión del día de Encuentro Creativo. En unos minutos más vamos a dar inicio, vamos a dar cinco minutitos para que se terminen de conectar y comenzaremos con nuestra ponencia del día de hoy. Claudia, where did you find this beautiful photo about me? <laughs> Diego sent us this picture. It's really nice. <laughs> this was during a party. Very nice. Yeah, it was. We can adapt it uh, to the session, so it looked really, really nice. With yeah. a smile. <laughs> All the photos that I have is with smiling. I'm beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, it, it looked really nice in the in the session. Hola a todos, <laughs> buenos días, bienvenidos a la segunda sesión del día de encuentro creativo. El día de hoy estamos con Antonella Di Pietro. Eh, les agradecemos por acompañarnos. En unos minutitos más eh, daremos inicio a la sesión para que bueno se terminen de conectar. Algunos avisos. Eh, bueno, recuerden que para poder concursar a las becas que ofrecen las universidades de encuentro creativo es necesario que participen al menos al 50% de las ponencias, lo cual equivale a 22 webinars o más. Entonces, bueno, para que nosotros podamos llevar control y registro de que están participando en estas 22 sesiones, les pedimos que, pues, por favor, dejen sus datos en un formulario que se manda en cada sesión. Entonces, es necesario tomar eh, lista, digamos, en cada sesión que ustedes participen, Así, bueno, podemos garantizar que tenemos eh, las 22 asistencias mínimas. Si quieren asistir a más, igual, bueno, no, no hay ningún problema. Ah, el formulario lo vamos a mandar en el chat a partir del minuto 30 o 40. Eh, y, bueno, justamente se manda cada 10 minutos. Entonces, igual, si no lo han visto o si lo sacó de la sesión, no se preocupen. Eh, nosotros lo estamos mandando cada 10 minutos a partir del minuto 30 o 40. Entonces, este, bueno... Vamos a dar inicio en dos minutos más y cualquier cosa que tengan duda, igual váyanos dejando sus dudas en el chat y con gusto los vamos respondiendo. Claudia, can you see me, right? I'm in the video, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We can see you and we can okay, hear good. you. Okay, good. That's good. Because I don't see me, myself anymore. But that's okay. ¿Quieres estudiar moda en Italia? En Laudex lo hacemos posible. Laudex puede financiar cualquier tipo de programa educativo en Italia. Primero, define tu curso y dónde quieres estudiar. Después, arma el presupuesto de tu viaje. Financiamos todo lo relacionado con el destino que quieres estudiar. Puedes pedir desde 15 mil pesos hasta 1 millón 725 mil pesos. Escanea este código QR para arrancar el proceso de financiamiento.
En Laudex, detonamos la educación, cambiamos vidas. Bueno, uh, buenos días a todos. A nombre de la Cámara de Comercio Italiana en México, les doy la bienvenida a la segunda semana de Encuentro Creativo, a la segunda sesión del día, en el cual tenemos el gusto de estar con nuestra ponente Antonella Di Pietro. Eh, esta sesión será titulada eh, HNWI, BIC, New Clients and Fashion Experiences. Esta sesión es impartida por una docente del Milano Fashion Institute y bueno, tenemos eh, el agrado de que esta sea la primera edición del Milano Fashion Institute participando en Encuentro Creativo. Eh, el Milano Fashion Institute ofrece programas de maestría en moda y gestión, destacándose por su enfoque práctico y colaboraciones con la industria. Cámara Nacional de la Moda Italiana es la organización que promueve la moda italiana y organiza eventos como el Milan Fashion Week. Y ellos colaboran de la mano con el Milano Fashion Institute, brindando a los estudiantes oportunidades para conectarse con profesionales y participar en eventos clave de la industria. Y bueno, nos les invitamos a que conozcan más de esta escuela. Después yo les estaré mandando el link en el chat. Y ahora, bueno, sin más por el momento, vamos a presentar a nuestra ponente, Antonella Di Pietro. Ella es Chief Executive Officer, ahí Chef Brand Officer en Bayonet. Ella tiene una carrera de liderazgo dinámica como Presidenta Ejecutiva Innovadora y Chef Brand Officer con una fuente de visión creativa de producto y de marca. Es una figura experta con un papel multifacético en el mundo altamente complejo y en constante cambio de las marcas actuales. Es atenta y sensible a la retroalimentación de los consumidores y a las tendencias del mercado para traducirlas en conocimiento, dando vida a la narrativa de la marca, gestionando su imagen, aumentando su valor y construyendo una cultura unificada. Tiene más de 25 años de experiencia impulsando el reconocimiento de la marca en mercados de todo el mundo, fomentando el crecimiento de ingresos y beneficios. Incluye, entre otros, una experiencia profesional significativa con las siguientes marcas, eh, Dots, Tommy Hilfiger, Karl Lagerfeld, eh, Grupo LBMH, Emilio Pucci y Ferragamo. Ah, les recuerdo que, bueno, la sesión va a ser en inglés. Al final le haremos algunas preguntas a Antonella. Entonces, bueno, igual pueden ir dejando sus preguntas en la sección de Q&A. Y, bueno, al final yo leeré todas estas preguntas para Antonella. Y ahora, bueno, sin más por el momento, Antonella, uh, we can start with your presentation. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Well, thank you very much to all of you. So, first of all, buenas tardes. I, as I told to Claudia, I speak a little bit of Spanish, but not really so good to have a lesson so, or to talk to you. So, but please, I know that the Q&A is, is at the end, but if along the way you have uh, questions that are really, don't worry, you can stop me because probably, you know, just talking 45 minutes is not really uh, super cool for you. So you could have eventually some questions super, super fast. So. Let's start. Uh, so we will speak today about clients and fashion and the approach and, uh, you know, let's say the, the, the way that they are connected today. And I have to say that it's really incredible what is happening and the change that we had in the last 25 years, because I don't want to say that consumers now manage the fashion, but in a way, today's consumers play a significant role in shaping and influencing the fashion industry. For sure, much more compared with the past when I start really working. And just talking about me, really few seconds, Claudia was fantastic describing me and myself and my work. So I'm fashion since practically all my life because I studied fashion, not really fashion, I studied, I studied art, but I, jumped in the fashion very fast because my uh, my internship was in Ralph Lauren and then you know my de my destiny was really to be in fashion and I am I have spent radically my entire career completely in the world of fashion the trends is, have always been my personal statement and uh, even the idea of helping people discover a little bit their unique style you know uh, to become very personal in fashion. And uh, 
from runways shows to rental retail floors. I I practically uh, I am a mix between between fashion and profession, as I always say. So as Claudia said, from Ferragamo to LVMH as a luxury experience, and then to PDH to make the restyling of Tommy uh, Ilfiger and uh, Karl Lagerfeld, and then back to Italy to work with Tots. And now I'm working uh, in a family office from Abu Dhabi who bought Vionet and Borsalino to super nice brand. And I am um, very specifically on Vionet, but working in general, even with the rest of the brands that are in this um, family office. So I always uh, say that uh, with incredible, beautiful people that I always define as beautiful minds working with me, uh, my my main job is to reawaken uh, to reawaken Sleeping Beauty in fashion brands. So breathing new life into the DNA story, deep diving in the um, in the DNA, don't so, and connecting this brand with the today consumers. That is really the more difficult uh, part when you are speaking or talking about heritage brand. So my job is practically to turn dormant potential brands into fresh, uh, nice experience that resonates with modern audience. So I am what in fashion we call brand whisperer. So really putting the, some important brands again on the market. So uh, let's say, first of all, let's, I know that everybody knows uh, how we divided today the generation of consumers, but it's better to give a super fast view. Uh, there is really the, the generation that we call millennials. So the white generation that are born approximately around uh, 1981 and 1996. And this is really, we prefer to call them millennials. After we have the generation Z between 19, uh, 1997 and 2012. And these are really the, what we like to call young, gener young adult generation. And the last one, that is the alpha, is really the newest one. Uh, let's say that the difference with the past of all the three uh, different generations is that they are really not passive people. We were, when I was young, much more passive, just really taking as good whatever fashion brands were putting on the market. Today, they are very active. They influence, as I told you, shape and even sometimes manage some part of the system of the fashion industry through what? Through the buying decision, to the social media influence, and uh, some demand, and we are lucky for that, of value experience like uh, sustainability and transparencies. These are practically the new client, and uh, brands cannot leave without, uh, let's say, their needs. They cannot really create collections. Mm -hmm. We generally think that without having, without having database, without having information, so what we call dashboards from the market, we cannot really do really collection today. There is no more possibility that you just impose whatever you need, for sure. You can impose, let's say, you, you can give to them the sense of the story, but we need, uh, uh, whether, whether it is through ethical practice, uh, technological in, in, in no innovation, uh, sense of community, but we need to be in the today market. The new client today uh, don't, so are, are really playing an active role. They'd say that even the variety of backgrounds and demographic is really giving a unique motivation and expectations. So we need to take in consideration. What we do as fashion brands before starting any collection, we just take care about the market where we, that we would like to reach. And we need to take in consideration the expectation of these consumers. So let's say that uh, the way these consumers approach the fashion experience are really completely different from the past, or at least 
quite different and it's mainly due to a cultural shift advanced and an, an advanced technology and increased awareness of sustainability but one of the most last really important things is the priority in life that's really something that is needed and that as a discussion that is really completely different from the past again speaking about me uh, the sense of priority of life was important but fashion was really one of the I don't know, we were crazy about fashion. We were absolutely not objective about fashion. Today, there is a sense of priority of life that is giving a new sense uh, to the fashion brands when they have to start a collection. So I think the best, you know, is um, to recognize uh, the client profile and understand how fashion brands uh, can better tailor, let's say, the offering, um, to get the attention of this consumer and even to have a better interaction because we need to start talking with these consumers. They will never be passive and just buy what we are proposing to them. And um, this, was, this starts really with the Generation Z. I think that really this is the first, let's say, uh, generation who start understanding that uh, they needed you know, to become much more close to understand what they were buying. And uh, this that we call young millennials were really the first one that are first of all digital natives because we were not digital natives. Uh, these are the first one being comfortable with the online shopping, with the social media and with the beginning of the technology. Uh, they value much more than before but for sure less than what is happening today with the generation alpha, the authenticity, the inclusivity. And so the brand that will take in consideration this part will be much more aligned with this kind of consumer. This is really the first generation that uh, rely heavily on the media platform like Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and mainly for fashion inspiration and trend discovery, because when uh, we start really talking with this generation and today, yes, we will see it's changing a little bit, but really this important platform were really a kind of fashion inspiration for them and something to discover uh, the brand, the fashion brand. Influencers, important for this generation today, we are just just really understanding that there is a little bit of shift uh, or at least influences with meanings. Uh, what was not happening at the very beginning because influencers at the very beginning were really an important statement for the consumers. But let's say that today there is again a much more critic or criticism when we speak about influencers. Uh, again, the Generation Z is the first uh, start speaking about sustainability and the ethical brands. And uh, so they like to see, you know, let's say brand with a um, kind of uh, transparencies on uh, supply chains, uh, on eco-friendly practice. Uh, this generation uh, uh, is already, was already, is already expecting uh, some uh, based um, recommendation based on their taste uh, in, in any possible way through real action, like for example, today through you know, comments on uh, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest and blah, 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 or through uh, AI driven suggestion, or even on e-commerce platform, uh, seems to be that e-commerce is really changing and becoming really a talking system, so it's just, it's not only a platform to sell, but it's, you know, in a way, something that is a little bit a retail online. Uh, people start really interacting with comments and with different kind of uh, chatbots that you can have on the commerce. So it's becoming something that can really make fashion understand, fashion brands understand that we need much more personalization, even on the, on the, on the styling. Or on the pieces that we need to do uh, uh, for these new consumers. And for sure, they appreciate uh, very much 
uh, brands that foster a sense of community. So hosting a live stream event, virtual fashion show, interacting online content. Is this clear? This is really the millennials. That is an important part of the fashion brands because millennials in general in this moment, they have even the money to spend because it's a consistent community of consumers with um, an age that is giving to them the possibility to spend uh, or at least to choose how they could spend their money. Uh, then we have an important one uh, before we speak about, you know, the, 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 in, the, in these generations in general, we have the conscious consumer. The conscious consumer are the consumers that are prior, prioritizing the ethical and sustainable fashion. I think you have seen even in companies like H&M and Zara that are normally doing a lot of mass production but a lot of little capsules, more and more important, and uh, even in the first basement of the stores that they call conscious or ethical or sustainable. There is different names, but everybody is really putting an accent on the need, on the market need to have conscious uh, um, or sustainable collection for these conscious consumers. And they are really part of uh, the old three generation that we said before, uh, but it's really an important, uh, an, an important consumers because they are willing to pay probably a little bit more for quality, longevity and ethical production. And uh, this conscious consumer at the end will embrace the slow fashion instead of the fast fashion. That's even the reason why you have in some fast fashion uh, organization, some slow fashion, that means collab, some designers, different kind of price and position, because they prioritize quality um, over quantities. That I hope is going to be, you know, a little bit of future of the world. They look a little bit more for timeless pieces and are attracted by brands that are promoting this kind of durable, uh, du durability. This is at the end, at the end guys, the, the kind of uh, uh, people who buys, let's say some basic stuff. So pieces that you can have in your wardrobe for a longer uh, period. And they just shop then fashion seasonal pieces uh, just to, to make the wardrobe a little bit more actual or eventually much more trendy. These consumers, these conscious consumers, they want to know a little bit more about the origin of their garments. That's the reason why a lot of brands are putting in place the passport. So you will have more and more because the laws are becoming a little bit stronger. But in general, in general, brands to give much more possibility uh, to know about the, 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 um, the origin of their garment, they are putting something that is called passport or sometimes a little QR code that is giving to you transparencies on material, production process, even arriving to working conditions. So the brand, more transparencies are about them and more this kind of consumers are really buying in these, in these companies. These are even the, um, let's say the, the, the first uh, consumers that are enthusiastic about clothing rental services, second hand shopping, resale platform, uh, these are really interesting, you know, and encouraging even the recycling and the upcycling of clothing. That is really one of the trends on the market. We know that, for example, the denim is one of the important problems in a company because it's absolutely not sustainable for many reasons, even for the great, incredible quantity of water that we need. And uh, why not encourage the brand to create an upcycling? So giving a new life to all the denim stuff and uh, make an upcycling product. So this is really what we call even an eco-friendly shopping experience. So they value the brand uh, that is reducing the waste uh, in, in garment and even in packaging, uh, in shipping option with a carbon neutral uh, offer and let's say supporting the planet, okay? 
uh, and this is a little bit um, cross all over the three uh, generation, thinking that the last one, the generation alpha is even more in this kind of system. But honestly, um, this was really starting from the very beginning of the generation Z. It was a little bit softer, but now it's becoming really super, super important. Another important segment of these three, and this a lot in the generation uh, that is that we call the young adult and uh, the, um, the alpha generation is the digital shoppers. The, this group is obviously shopping a lot online, appreciate convenience, speed, engaging in digital experience. They expect high quality of visual. This is really what I, I think is really uh, in this moment, one of the important marketing budget that we have. So creation of content, creation of a very detailed product description. Uh, so to become very interesting, very interesting for this kind of consumer. These digital shoppers are really very open to the advanced technologies, shopping experience, such as the AR tools. I don't know if you are friendly, with this new technology that allows you to visualize your your uh, dress on your on your body. When I start with Karl Lagerfeld, Karl was super much super in this uh, in this kind of technology. It was not really very well done when we started the project of Karl Lagerfeld. There was something like uh, seven eight years ago, uh, even ten probably. And uh, uh, but Carl was so much in this kind of technology that we create a very specific tools that was practically uh, putting uh, your body in your, in your uh, little changing room. There was practically a little iPad where you can have your photos and there was a system that was very manual, but super nice, you know, to give uh, this kind of tools in a very handmade version. Today, the AR, is a tool that is really giving to you the possibility to see yourself with this kind of clothing and some accessories and understand if it fits to you in terms of aesthetic and in terms of attitude. Okay, so they like even suggestion based on the very specific uh, uh, shopping habits. For example, this is the people, the digital shoppers that are really very much into the possibility that you advise on e-commerce, for example, uh, some interesting tools that is called styling. So they love the pieces, but probably they would like to be, uh, they, they would like to have suggestion in which way you can put together and why you should buy, you should buy a wardrobe that is giving to you this kind of personalization. These groups is the first group that, for example, in an e-commerce is, um, is open to do subscription. And that's the reason why we understand very fast when we have this kind of shoppers and we send, you know, millions of ideas about subscription based on fashion services for accessories, seasonal wardrobe and um, curated very specific boxes. But Let's say that another important, and this really I start a lot even with Tommy figure when we start really the restyling with Gigi Adit. Uh, there is an incredible nice uh, consumer that I appreciate really very much is the plus size and inclusive shoppers. It's becoming more and more important in our life, fashion life. This is, let's say the plus size, uh, and um, they love the brand that cater a diverse range of body types, sizes, styles. They value massively brands that embrace body positivity and inclusivity, for example. And uh, the fashion experience approach that they have is really that they are um, they, they 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 need to feel the brand. Uh, that make them feel represented by the brand. So they don't want to be, you know, there are, again, I was working, for example, in my life with Giambattista Valli, one of the best designers in the world. I cannot forget that he wouldn't have done never some of the clothing in big sizes. And I remember that my concern was, but why we have to dress only the 
the, 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 the slim people and, you know, just the kind of women. I would like to dress all the women, but it was totally against. Today is totally pro this kind of stuff, you know, because he understand the importance of this kind of people. And I like it because in general, you know, is a very um, is a very conscious client in the sense that they mm, they have a sense of priority of their body, so they don't want to uh, to go in different direction. They just want to dress what they want, but keeping you know the the variety of body types and uh, even ethnic backgrounds. And um, uh, these are really an incredible. Uh, they appreciate quite a lot when branded create space for community because they like really online forums, social media groups. So they can connect with the people who share their style needs and experience. And it does not mean that they are really plus size people, but it's just a kind of mindset. They love to really share experience in this kind of direction. And they are really, uh, really completely convinced that they really choose for brands who sell clothing that are not only fits well uh, and just to some kind of people. In Even if they are really the right people in terms of, uh, let's say, they are fitting models, but they don't care. They just want to choose in brand who can really appreciate different kind of body. And uh, for sure, this is people that is arriving to the very, very far is arriving to comfortable and functional because they need that's reason why even many of the brands are really shaping again the collections around, you know, interesting um, versions of materials that are body comfortable and functional. So it's not only a question of offering size guide, uh, but even really going for detailed fit description, probably different kind of uh, of uh, photos of a different kind of body, uh, different kind of cost, con, con, customers possibility reviews, and even a lot of, you know, sharing comments about how the brand is fitting, how comfortable it is, which kind of size, is, where do we have, where do we arrive? And this, uh, this shop, shoppers so uh, what I told you before are really promoting the body positivity and the self-acceptance that is really one of the important battle that we are doing in fashion so we need to give the possibility to accept themselves and uh, but just wear whatever they want you know even nice and beautiful fashion brands and uh, they, it, it's, it's for these people that the marketing campaign are changing quite drastically. And uh, as you could see, instead of having only the dreaming models, let's say we are now putting in marketing campaign, you know, uh, that celebrates diversity in any, from any point of view, in terms of body, in terms of demographics, in terms of ethnics, uh, uh, people and uh, et ethnic backgrounds. For sure, another important consumers in this moment is the technical people. You know that people is really, I am working in on Vionne on a very strange launch because Vionne is one of the most, 100 years ago, she was really one of the most innovative person in fashion. So that's the reason why I think that technology is something that she would have embraced like crazy and that's reason why this is why this is for me one of the in in very interesting you know uh, people and consumers to take in consideration they are tech savvy professional and they mm, see fashion solutions solution that are convenient you know functional uh, easy for people who is working and for social environment they value efficiency and they are what I call early adopters that are really not at terms that is really existing still today anymore, but for me, they are early adopter of the fashion technology. So what is the experience uh, between them and the fashion is for sure that are interested in smart clothing, 
that incorporate technology in a way. I don't know if you, I was working some years ago with a brand that is really managing to have uh, clothing outerwear that is really taking in consideration the weather. So that it was a little bit, you know, eating jacket or clothing with UV protection, uh, fitness tracking apparel. And I think that this will become for some product, not for every single product, because we still need to dream in fashion because this is the base of the fashion. But for some important product, we need to have um, some innovation in this kind of technical services. But it's not only in the clothing, in garment, but it's even in the services. I think that is super important to have today some important uh, um, services that we can give to the technology. So faster, uh, faster, for example, virtual styling services. Not everybody, you know, in the morning knows how to dress. So they have to go, you know, not everybody has the, the taste. And they don't want to use the taste. They want other people to tell them, okay, just buy this wardrobe and mix a little bit in this way and they will be super happy. Or people that want to be uh, teached, you know, in which way they have to recognize what is good for their body, uh, in which kind they have to dress. So this with the technology can become really something super interesting for, for your everyday wardrobe. And... Um, and even for the accessories, you know, you you can need really better explain why you have to buy a bag or some shoes and that, you know, really through technology, much more comfortable, even on some important shoes like Ail. You know, there are a big friend of mine that is a great designer, Diego Dolcini, who is really doing an incredible technology in the shoes to wear better, uh, to wear shoes of 100 centimeters, uh, millimeters years, 10 centimeters of ill, but being super comfortable. And this is just a question of uh, technology. And uh, I think that this is really the, um, this is really the, this kind of uh, technical, let's say, approach is uh, to prioritize the, they prioritize the performance, uh, fabrics that offer comfort, durability, uh, durability and even easy maintenance because even today we don't have really a lot of time you know to uh, to wash to go laundry and stuff we don't want to spend so much money so I think this is really one of the future important you know consumers that we will have and what is happening in fashion in fashion is happening that with all these consumers so we are more and more going through strong reduction of um, the offer. So in the past, just for you to give an idea, we used to have collections of uh, 300 pieces, uh, 300 SKUs to give, you know, a little bit to everybody what they need, even divided by uh, area, geographic area or needs, you know, north, south, different kind of weather. But today we are, we are changing a little bit the model and uh, we have nice, incredible capsule that can really fit with the, some specific market needs because we are really creating capsules for very specific reasons. So for a question of geographic uh, possibility or because there are collaboration with some other brands or for some reasons, and it gives to us the possibility to have little collection and with much more communication and very specific from some market needs. And here, we have the, what we call minimalist and the capsule wardrobe enthusiastic. This is really a new generation of people. We know that capsule are really starting quite recently or collaboration, even if just, I don't know how much younger you are, but um, uh, Karl Lagerfeld did for the first time, like 20 years ago, he did the first collaboration with H&M. It was unbelievable. No one was doing something like this, and Karl Lagerfeld was one of the first ones. But this is, a, this is a new kind of consumers. They are very simple, okay, quality, purpose. They prefer pieces that can be trend-driven by fashion or focusing on small, cohesive wardrobe. They are fast. They probably, they probably the experience with fashion that they really buy, really 
probably even just one product if the capsule is really just about one specific SKU. They are simple shoppers. They prefer branded, branded offers, easy to navigate, for example, website, uh, very easy product details. Uh, they are straightforward to the, to the shopping experience. Too, make, too many choices for them, it doesn't work. So that's the reason why they like on minimalist situations or capsule wardrobe or collab, because they are really straight to the point. They have a very fast message. They don't want to waste their time. They probably like both brands or they are lovers of one of the brands and they discover the new one, but they are really, uh, they create the wardrobe with few pieces or they can be people who just dress always with the same kind of stuff. The collab really and the capsule collection started in the past being about very specific stuff, like for example, uh, you know, jersey stuff, so uh, uh, jumpers, uh, sweaters, because it was fast and because there was an incredible quantity of consumers in this direction. Today are becoming really even real wardrobes, but uh, you know, very much specific with a very fast message, super strong, and even online, they want to find really not so much, uh, not so much stuff. They want to arrive step to the point. It's where the brand need to have a strong message, just uh, really be clear and uh, give to these people the experience of the message and storytelling uh, even more than the product collections. And uh, probably the last that if for me even a, 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 a kind of... Um, uh, let's say it's more um, an experience, let's call consumers, are the consumers that are more not really in love with the brand itself or not in love with some product, but the experience is much more important for them. So they like, uh, for example, uh, immersive experience over traditional shopping. So they are attracted by pop-up, experimental retail, interactive interactive brand campaign that for me together with the technology um, with the tech the techno consumers let's say one of the most important one and what will happen in the future i think that we will be attracted okay by the brand but we will need uh, to give them an incredible um, story event workshop interactive experience uh, uh, fashion shows but with a lot of participation and digital art and installation and mix with something that is not only fashion so when I speak about experience I speak for example about the experience like a taste experience like a restaurant you know that in a way are close to the brand for some reasons uh, the hospitality experience the wellness the you know everything that is experienced in a way is attracting these people from other reasons and not only the product. And um, this is the people that in general loves uh, limited edition uh, collaboration, novelties, uh, unique collection. They are even what I call collectors. So sometimes they can even be the resellers because they like really to scout, you know, in, um, in new stuff and eventually after, you know, make business even from this kind of resellers. Uh, reselling opportunity. Uh, they, this is the people that is really, the, they appreciate the bespoke because they go for collaboration, so limited quantity, but they even are people who eventually like to ask the brand to bespoke the, um, the product. So uh, it's strongly demanding customizing, customization services, monogramming, everything that is making this product a little bit much more personal. And uh, that's the reason why they are difficult consumers because they are really uh, taking care even about the storytelling of the company. So the reason why, and uh, whether it's an heritage of uh, or luxury brand or a new brand or startup, but the creative inspiration behind every single seasonal collection needs to be one of the most important ones. So this is a little bit of uh, what practically is the new consumers 
And uh, I think it's clear that it's really uh, something that is, they, they, to engage this kind of consumers, we need much more job, we need much more work. I have to say that compared to my past working life, uh, where we were, you know, putting on the market a collection and let's say that we were even, you know, giving the, let's say, I don't want to say that there was no possibility for the consumers to interact with the company, but anyway, there was much more a point of view from the company. There was a little bit more passively uh, engaged by the consumers. Today, mm, there is much more job. We need to really do create contents. We need to engage the consumers. And even if, let's say, uh, it was easy with celebrities in the past, because you know now the consumers they know they understand when the celebrities or the influencers are not real. Uh, even this is one of the most important things. They need to be credible. They cannot really like in the past just put something on Instagram on TikTok and you know uh, produce business about it. So we need to be much more. Um, the fashion experience for the new consumers needs to be immersive, need to be personalized and tech-driven. I would resume a little bit that these three important words will drive the fashion in the next years. So immersive, we need absolutely to get in contact with, uh, with the people. We need to do more that we can personalize and understand uh, what they want through systems and uh, the technology will become really one of the most important, uh, one of the most, most important experience in store, because I think that we are coming back to retail experience a lot. So e-commerce will be a talking tools, but I think that retail will becoming more and more an important experience. The most important thing is this, that retail is not just a store. It's not just the store where the consumers, where the clients can go and buy the collection, but needs to be really an experience. So probably for some reasons, we would like to eat in this store because the restaurant is fitting with our idea about the food. Then probably there is really a wellness uh, uh, approach of this brand. And uh, eventually we have even the possibility, uh, like, I don't know if you know, Corso Como in Italy, uh, we have even a, an experience about the hospitality because the aesthetic, or what is telling to us, the storytelling of the company is really sitting very much with our idea. Let me know if we have something or I can continue. I think uh, we can go really a little bit deeper in some of these kind of uh, Claudia, but I think it's better that they ask some questions. Okay. Well, I think we can go a little deep with the subject because we don't have any questions uh, okay. by the moment. But well, I will <laughs> encourage the students to put their questions in the Q&A box so I can read it to you at the end. Okay, no problems. So let's say that now there is something that is important that we have to understand. After that, we have all this data driven. After that, we have all these ideas about, you know, who is our clients? Let's say that seems to be seems to be that fashion can do less mistakes, but it's not true because, as I as I told you, this is really like you know the brand is totally nude. Is let's say the brand is really completely open today to the to to to, to the clients. So we need to to take some actions, and uh, we need practically. And now are we facing you know? Uh, this this new way you know of acting uh, uh, with our consumers. So let's say that first of all, and I think this is really now clear, we have to to try to be sustainable. We this is a central to the experience. There is no one in this moment that would like to buy really everything. I don't know. I, I know that we are not completely. Um, all in this direction, but let's say that we have five seconds before buying the stuff where we think, oh my God, could I have something sustainable for this price? And for sure, the sustainability is very expensive. So we are finding solutions with the fashion brands to understand in which way we can do it. And um, that's the reason why at least 
we are really trying to be, uh, before being eco-conscious, and as I told you, it's really a kind of very difficult system because it's very expensive, we can at least take in consideration the supply chain, so the social compliance. We are really trying to be really fair to the world and try to, the most that we can, a really good supply chain that is really taking in consideration the social procurement of the people. So to be really much more, uh, to take care about the fashion choices. And I, don't, and I know that even this is really not easy because sometimes the prices is driven, is the drive of some, some collections, but we need to understand in which way we can try to mix uh, this part that is really an important and center situation of the fashion producers and go completely in the in the exper experiential shopping. Um, as I told you, through pop-up stores, exclusive fashion events, interactive and, uh, and let's say uh, positive, you know, ideas about what fashion is. So in terms of sustainability, we can be we can use eco-friendly materials. In terms of, as I told you, transparent uh, supply chain, so we can uh, give more information about the sourcing to manufacture our stuff. Circular fashion, that's really one of the, of the possibilities, really recycling programs. There are a lot in this moment to reduce the waste, you know. Uh, we know that there are some technology that allows us to take the stuff and make it again, completely give a new life. So we can use we can uh, use really some uh, some some materials like the silk, for example, and take all the silk dresses and do again the yarn and do new meters. And so this is upcycling uh, stuff. Let's say that we have to try to use the technology for a much more secular fashion, a much more interesting. Inclusivity and diversity, we need to have a mindset that is taking in consideration the positive positivity, size inclusivity, and uh, accept and accepting ourselves in the way that we are done. We can be fashion people in not only if we have uh, if we are slim, uh, fantastic, and super super on on top of the aesthetic. Everybody as a personal way of, uh, you know, putting the fashion on. And this needs to become something that is normal. We don't have to even speak more. It's like sustainability. I, I, I am inspirational speakers in the United Nations of Sustainability. I always say the day that we don't speak anymore about sustainability because it's a normal way of living that the moment when it's becoming really something important for the fashion brand. And that's to say, for the body positivity and size inclusivity without arriving to the extreme when it's something that is making us really sick in our body. But we need to really understand that there is always a beauty, you know, so it's fantastic. Uh, I don't speak anymore about gender neutrality because this is something that at least is already done. And uh, um, the cultural representation, I think that it really um, the DNA of the company is becoming more and more important. The brand needs to be credible. They cannot do something that does not really give to them the possibility to start doing something that is completely out of the, of the brand. The authenticity and the brand value are becoming much more important than before. What we do now when we start with the, the restyling of the first thing that I do when I arrive, and this was even a nice lesson in uh, in our course here in Milano, the difference between the code and DNA, the brand needs to stay strongly in the DNA and, the, and can change the code, you know, in the way that they want. And uh, that's uh, the most important thing that we have to do in our brand. So the first thing that we do is a nice brand book where we speak about the, the brand so that everybody that is working in the company can understand what is the DNA and the, what we cannot really never forget and where we can really just do modification, modification to be much more close to what is happening in the world that are all the code of the company. And uh, after this, we need to be clear on the market with a purpose. So this is something that we need to interact 
with the consumers, we need to say which is our purpose, why we are really why we are putting some stuff on the market and it's even beyond the profit. We need to explain to them why we are putting something on the market, which is the reason why they have to buy our company. So that's where the heritage DNA is really important and where the code can be much closer to the people. Mm, ethical, ethical leadership, if we, if we explain this, um, the leadership is much more ethic and is much more easy for the consumers to become a part of this idea. Taylor experience, we are really managing to have uh, the, the, let's say the interaction with the consumers with the Taylor experience. As I told you before, uh, recommendation, but the really clear one. That's the reason why e-commerce is becoming a tool to interact with the consumers and give real recommendation about styling, about what they should wear, about colors versus uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, demographics or them or kind of position, you know, in the in the world, uh, on demand fashion, so the bespoke, made to order, so give to them the possibility that they receive a little bit of creativity in everybody. So probably they need something, you know, to even express themselves, and they cannot really only just dress uh, whatever we propose to them. So, so a little bit of possibility that we give to them a um, personal twist. And again, as I told you, the virtual try-ons uh, and styling that is giving, again, not everybody wants to know, wants to lose and waste time, you know, in the morning to know how to dress. So why don't really give to them the possibility to create a wardrobe and you receive a tone directly, your wardrobe with everything. You know, the way that, for example, Edis Liman is working to the normal collection is a very much wardrobe system you can go in Celine if you have the money for sure and buy the complete wardrobe I'm sure that Eddie, Eddie the man is working by looks you know so you can have your wardrobe and just really buy everything and you know exactly in uh, 15 days how you have to dress so which kind of feeling you can give to yourself and for sure a little bit of digital fashion I don't think that the um, Metaverse and this kind of stuff has given the results that we were always thinking, but it's still something, you know, that in a way will uh, will work with our, um, in probably there will be an evolution, but uh, will be still in our mind. And more than before, the quality and the longevity. I think that uh, everything is going in the less but better. Uh, less but much more beautiful for the planet. So I think that durability will take over fast fashion. There will still exist because we have for sure a kind of money that we can allow to spend. And so that's the reason why the fast fashion will be always there. But I think that the consumers are shifting away from the fast in favor to the high quality durable item and last long. And instead of buying three t-shirts uh, with five, five euros, you can buy just one better than, much more quality and uh, with 15 euros. So in a way, I think that this is, this is happening and there's gonna be even investment in timeless pieces uh, rather than just seasonal trends will be more. And we will buy little seasonal trends to just really twist you know the pieces that we have in uh, in our in our um, in our wardrobe and for sure we will go from something like uh, flexible payment option i think we will go absolutely even in 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 that direction buy now what i call buy now and pay later so we will be we will we will be obliged to give uh, uh, this because it happens in on the credit cards for some other things like, uh, you know, payment that your credit card is giving to you monthly, so you can buy and do pay monthly. I think that even fashion needs to go in this kind of, uh, of, uh, of situation. And for sure, community and engagement. More the community will become important and more, you know, we will have uh, the possibilities brand to be inside uh, 
the real the right community. Uh, what else uh, I can tell you? Uh, for sure, again, ethical and marketing uh, storytelling. The marketing will completely have a, a great transformation because the marketing will become much more close to consumers. So even the uh, campaign, we used to, to do two campaigns each year. We cannot do it anymore. Now we have at least three or four campaign each season that are really speaking to the consumers that are really very fast, not really anymore interested in campaign. Uh, again, you are young people, but when I start working, there was one campaign each season, and this was the campaign for all the six months. Now, in the best case, we have three, four campaign, but honestly, we need one important campaign each month that some people can call contents, but I think that are really campaign because the contents are the daily stuff that you need. So the marketing is totally changing and is really becoming really a content creation with really uh, agency, you know, uh, that are really helping you. And that's even something that is happening today like crazy. We have much more agency than the past because you need creation of contents like crazies because we need real um, you know stories that you have to put on the, on the consumers that are gravitate uh, around your brand and um, you have to be really even credible that's the reason why marketing and even this kind of stuff is coming much more difficult because you have to tell meaningful stories that are really very close to the brand that are credible for the brand and that's the reason why, even in terms of uh, even in terms of uh, uh, choosing celebrities and influencers, we cannot really do like the past. But everyone was giving to a celeb the stuff. Now we need to be really very much uh, in a quality system, even for this kind of uh, product placement. Let's say that the expectation of the new consumers are completely different from the past. So we need to be much more careful because there is an incredible an incredible commitment between the brand and the consumer. They talk. It's not anymore a passive situation, as I told you in the very beginning, but this is really what is happening. Okay, uh, well, thank you so much, Antonella, for the lecture. It was really interesting. Uh, we have already two questions. I think one is really interesting and it's like ad hoc to the subject that we're talking about. That is, what do you think are the challenges that the market is facing regarding the way they reach their target audiences through social media? Uh, okay, tell me the question again. I think I understand, but I want to be sure. Okay, what do you think are the challenges that the market is facing regarding the way they reach their target audiences through social media? Okay. Uh, I think I, in, in, my last, uh, in my last sentence, I gave a little bit of answer. The challenge are create really, uh, let's say that the social media are becoming always more and more real, realistic, let's say. So that means you cannot invent the story of, of your brand because the, the consumers are too much aware about what is happening. So the challenge that we face is that you have to go through social media with a real story, with something that is really in the DNA of the brand and is really as a meaningful story if the brand want to have long uh, consumers relations. You know, that's really the most important thing. This is the, the challenge is to create something that is credible. And it's not easy because we are really even, we are facing, let's say, moment where you want to be a little bit, you know, close to the consumer. So sometimes your brand can be not already in that kind of segment, but you need to be real. I think this is the most important challenge. Create contents in social media that are close to the brand. Did I answer the question to the guys who, to the person who did the question? Okay, I think so. Uh, Audrey, you can put us in the chat if uh, Antonella answered your question, it would be really helpful. 
And we have another question uh, from Roberto mm -hmm. Franco. That is, what kind of client is the one who buy from Sheen? How do you describe it? Uh, from Shane, you mean? Yeah, Shane. Okay. <laughs> the, that's that's really something that we are really trying to understand because it's an incredible something that is going against everything that is happening in the world because probably the world is sustainable, should be sustainable, the world should have less fast fashion. I think is a girl or practically a guy who wants to have fast stuff who does, I, I don't want to say that he does not really care, but you know, it's something that is very close to what fashion is proposing on the market with a good price and very fast receive. So there are mix between fashion trends, services and price. I think these three important things for some uh, some people are really the priority. So very fast being fashion trends. So the right color, the right aesthetic, and something that has a big brand that's copy very fast. So I cannot afford the, the most important brand or the expensive brand. Uh, Shane is giving to me the possibility to buy it. It's super fast. I can receive the day after or sometimes even the same day. So I can really go in a place in a some something with my nice dress and that's a good price so honestly i don't care i don't even wash it probably after i put in the wardrobe and i don't use it anymore i think this is really the consumer so in a way is a strange consumer that is not really in our dashboards but it's a real one because they are selling like crazy so probably each one of us can be temporary a shame consumers when it comes to something that you like like crazy, like a cellar pieces that you saw in the show after three days is in shame. It's a good price and you want to go out with that piece. So there is a little bit of uh, of shame consumers in anybody of the consumers that I said. Okay, perfect. Uh, thank you for <laughs> your answer. Uh, we have another question from Christina uh, Michel. Um, how do you convince people that buying quality rather than quantity is better even? It is better even when it is also in their economic interest. But first of all, you, you can convince because you know now there is the communication about the planet. So everybody knows compared to the past that the fast fashion is giving a lot of problems because we don't know how to do with these pieces. Sometimes they, they're not even upcycling the pieces, you know. So that's really, first of all, is the what is happening on the planet. So why you should choose between quality and quantities, you know, is because, you know, there is the story of the world now. We know that we have not many years, you know, to save the planet. So we need to be conscious about this. So this is one of the first reasons. And then, you know, the second reason is that instead, of, I understand that the quantity is uh, is probably much fun because you can have three different kind of stuff, but you can have something that is gooder in terms of fit, in terms of because better quality is even fitting better and it's even better for your body. You know, putting on the body, a, a, a let's say, three times uh, a T-shirt of five euros is probably not so healthy than something that is really more conscious of 15, 15 euros. So that should be the way. And we need to be, we need even to teach, you know, to these people uh, how to understand that quality can be better than quantities. But I think that even the big brand, the fast fashion brands will go a little bit more in this direction. Okay. Well, thank you, Antonella. Another question has arrived is from Antonio Rosas. What's the role on the fashion experience in the global communication for the new consumers? It's super important. As I told you before, marketing and communication need, will need to change totally. You know, everything that was old is completely out. There is no way to communicate um, with a consumer that is not passive anymore. So 
uh, the role will be really key. Uh, the way that we will interact, uh, as I told you, the creation of content. First of all, now the marketing in the past was just creation of uh, one campaign. Now you need more. So you need absolutely uh, faster people, uh, collaboration with agency. You need really uh, marketing experience, my communication experience more than before because you need to have the database arriving each day that can be completely different from one day to another. We are much more respectful about the demographic, as I told you. So you have to do very specific campaign that are not fitting for all the world. So you can do a campaign in Italy, you could need completely something different for Mexican people. So, you know, so yes, the marketing is changing drastically and we are going in directions that are really much faster than before. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you, Antonella. I think we don't have any further questions. Uh, I just want to make an invite for the students because um, related to the subject that you were talking about, this afternoon, we're going to have a webinar with Alejandra Ururchutu from Benetton. And she's going to talk about this subject, about how a global brand adapts their uh, campaigns to the different countries. For example, the campaign from Mexico is really different than the campaign that Benetton does in Italy. So if you want to have further information about this subject, I think it's really interesting. And you can join us this afternoon at 5 p.m for the session with Benetton. Um, Antonella, we don't have any further questions, but I don't know if you want to add something. Uh, it was a really interesting topic. I I, I think I, I told you a little bit, uh, let's say that the, my final claim is that now we need to be fresh and innovative. I think uh, it's a mix between experience. So we need in brands fashion experience people and new mindset. So fresh people, young consumers that are joining, you know, the fashion from the other way around. And uh, we cannot use anymore the usual tactics. I think that there is a reshuffle in, in, in fashion that is really super important. We need, you know, to do a kind of head with the important experience that we have in all our life, but we need really fresh and innovative approach. So I don't know which kind of uh, uh, of people you are creating or which kind of people you have. I think, uh, for example, in Milano, we have people that is much more about creativity, product, product and development, much more marketing, you know, communication, PR. We have different kind of people. But anyway, anyway, I think the mindset that we have to keep in mind is really that these important pieces, this important bullet point that I told you to you needs to be mined because the future is going to be about brands who will be credible for the consumers and consistent with the message. Uh, strongly reduce the collection, making message much more clear. And I don't want to say that this is really the final receipt to be on the market, but even for people who want to put brand on the market that we have again, even is in Milano, you know, even for a startup, you cannot start like I even start my line when I was young, you know, just like this. I think this important bullet point needs to be really in uh, in your uh, in your vibe, in your brand. The, 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 what you mean about your brand needs to be clear for the consumers on the market. And uh, this is a kind of uh, hype way, you know, a little bit more hype, a little bit more uh, cool way of putting the brand on the market, but we need to be, we need to be absolutely consistent with the message. Hey, and Daniela, thank you. We have two other questions. The first one is from Gloria Spinoza. Do you think that mm -hmm. most people are aware of the environmental pollution caused by the textile industry? Uh, I have to tell you that probably not everybody uh, knows, but uh, it's quite a lot of people, more than we think. Then they can choose to close the eyes and uh, be really not really, uh, you know, happy about saying, oh my God, because they want to go in H&M, a 
go back with incredible quantity of pieces, that for sure. But I think that is quite, uh, and I think that anyway, there is a lot of communication. We have, for example, as United Nations are really talking like crazy uh, to the people about, you know, what does it mean to have really uh, the pollution that the textile and fashion is giving to people. And even we are trying to explain that something that in the, that in the past, uh, there is a difference between sustainable, you know, vegan, you know, the problem, for example, about the leather, uh, there was really a kind of uh, a stuff against the bags in leather that we discovered that it's not true. It's probably sometimes, uh, this is another question, it's a moral question about animals, it's about, you know, social uh, stuff, but it's not really, not always. We can do really nice things and uh, anyway, be fashion people, but I think that now still there are some people for sure that do not really understand or they want to close their eyes. But I think there is a kind of uh, communication that we should eventually even improve. Okay, Antonella. Well, thank you so much for your time and thank you to MFI for helping us to coordinate this session. Um, we have another last question from Maria, but it's just like a closure. Where can we find you? Uh, for example, you have LinkedIn, Instagram, where they can follow you. Yes, in order totally. for... you, can, you can find me on uh, LinkedIn. You can find me on Instagram. Uh, it's Antonella the EPE, Antonella DP. Okay. So the, the beginning of my, so Antonella DIPI, -I, Antonella DP, and on LinkedIn. Just take in consideration that there are, there is a mistake for me on LinkedIn, so just look at the one where I am with Vionet. It's the last one. Okay. Well, perfect. And whatever you need, Claudia, you can just write me whenever you want and whatever you Thank you very much to you, Samantha. I saw yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Artelela, for your time, for being, uh, for being with us this evening. I think it's a little bit late for you in Italy, so thank you so much for being here for answering all the questions it was a really interesting session and well thank you as well to mfi for for putting yeah, us in contact with you I thank you to these people that is really saying thank you to me but i thanks all of you and i hope that it was really gracias i love it and uh was really interesting and uh if you need let me know claudia if you want me to put these lessons like the point that i said on on um, on a little uh, document so you have it or not. Let me know. Yeah, please. It will be really interesting. So we can send it then to the people that participated in this session. Okay, I will create it and I will send to you. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to thank switch so to much. Spanish in order to give the final messages, but thank you so much, Antonella. Thank you very much. And whatever you need me, let me know. Thank you. Bueno, muchas gracias a todos por acompañarnos en esta segunda sesión del día eh, de Encuentro Creativo. Como les comentábamos en la mañana, ello es el día, la semana 2 de Encuentro Creativo. Aún vamos a tener más webinars, entonces los invitamos a seguirse conectando a todo este contenido de valor gratuito que están dando las universidades italianas. A nombre de la Cámara de Comercio Italiana en México, agradezco a las marcas que están apoyando a esta cuarta edición, entre las cuales están Esiro Luxótica, Lavazza, Orfe México, Fénix, Maxmara, entre otras. Agradecemos también al Milano Fashion Institute por ayudarnos a coordinar esta sesión el día de hoy. Eh, pueden encontrar mayor información del Milano Fashion Institute en nuestro sitio web. Igual es tener pendiente porque ellos abren diferentes convocatorias de becas eh, en el transcurso del año. Entonces, igual visiten su sitio web, conozcan todo lo que el Milano Fashion Institute hace porque ellos trabajan directamente con la Cámara Nacional de la Moda. Y bueno, también los invito a visitar nuestro sitio web ver la sección de becas. Eh, varias de las universidades de encuentro creativo están ofreciendo becas para irse a estudiar dos semanas o un verano en Italia, lo cual les da mucho valor a su perfil profesional. Entonces, igual, los invitamos a que conozcan las becas, revisen las bases en los proyectos que se tienen que mandar y, bueno, que cumplan con el 50% de asistencia 
que son 22 sesiones. No olviden pasar su asistencia y bueno, lo seguimos viendo en próximas sesiones de Encuentro Creativo. Thank you so much, Antonella. Have a good day. Thank you to all of you. Gracias. Chao. Chao.